Coming up on today's edition of Locked On Eagles, it's Dallas week. The 5-0 Philadelphia Eagles take on the 4-1 Dallas Cowboys. Primetime Sunday Night Football. We'll preview it coming up next right here on LOE. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for our Lockdown Eagles listeners. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Lockdown. I'm Louis DiBiase. He's Gino Camilleri. We're taking a first look at Eagles, Cowboys. The Eagles are the only undefeated team left in the NFL, but they are only one game up on the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants in the NFC East. Gino, this is a huge game, and it's crazy to feel this kind of pressure when you're undefeated, but the nature of the NFL right now is the NFC East is the best division in football, which is crazy to say, but it's true. I hope this week, regardless of outcome, ends the narrative that the Philadelphia Eagles haven't played anybody in this quote that they got lucky. Which I think is which in, I already disagree asinine. with. This is definitely even with Cooper Rush playing the best team probably they've played. Yeah, it's an asinine line of thinking, seeing that they played Minnesota, who's currently leading that division. The Jags Four were leading one. that yeah. division at the time. Arizona had a chance to be tied or at least lead that division if they were to beat the Eagles. And that's what the result of this Sunday is going to be as well. The winner is going to take the lead in the NFC East. We'll see what happens with the Giants. Dallas does have that tiebreaker between them and the Giants having already played so now you're going into this the second NFC East matchup they aren't back loaded where you get four games in the last four weeks against NFC opponents it's a little more spread out and the big thing here Lou is that after this week you're gonna have two weeks off until you play Pittsburgh you have the bye coming up that following Sunday If you're going to leave it all on the line in a game, and I know that they were injured last week, but a lot of those injured players should be coming back, the bye week will help you get healthy, but you know what is at stake this Sunday. The division runs through either of these teams right now. We'll see how the Giants kind of figure out who they really are. I don't know if we've seen their true identity yet, but Dallas, they have the roster Dak should be coming yeah, I don't back think within going a couple anywhere. weeks. I, I don't, I don't see them going game. away. This is a huge matchup. It's a landscape. huge game, and it's right now for first place in the division. And I don't remember a time where both teams were playing this complete of a product of football, maybe since – I mean, because there's been a ton of close games they've had over mm-hmm. the years that have had division implications. 2019, week 16, basically win for the division or go home. The Eagles won that game. You know, 20 – I don't know, 2018 too, both teams were fighting for a playoff spot. They both end up making it. And you've had games like in 2013 where it's winner take all. But both times, all those times, it's like both teams were good, not great, or one team was good and the other one was struggling. Mm. The last time both teams were this hot, 2014 maybe, and we know the Eagles collapsed on the stretch, man. I mean, both these rosters are amongst the best in the NFL. And when you look at how Dallas has been building yeah, is their window right now. And it seems to be like that with their roster. They do have a lot of older guys, especially you look at the offensive line. I mean, Travis Frederick, you thought he would be here for the long haul haul. He ends up retiring. He's no longer there. Martin isn't getting any younger there at the right guard position, still playing top notch football. Tyron Smith is out Their defensive players. They have a good mix of all of them. They got youth with, I mean, Trevon Diggs. You have Micah Parsons, of course. Leighton Vander Esch is one of those older veterans now, which seems crazy that we're talking about him as a veteran. But right now, the Eagles, I feel, are in that window too. And it's so hard to discount either of these teams. And whoever wins this game should take the favorite to take the division. That would be good. But the thing is, it's only week six. So right. even if you do drop this game, it'll be tough because these NFC East games, when you lose one, it's like losing two. It's a two-game swing, essentially. Your opponent goes up by one game, and you go down by one. That's the two-game swing. And we have seen this, like you had said. Have they ever been this good playing each other at the even same time? Even with Cooper time? Rush, 
Gino, this Cowboys team looks really good. And that's why you want to get this win too, because Dak Prescott's probably going to be the quarterback for that next matchup later in the year. You would have to assume. And yeah. once again, that will be another test that we add to Jalen Hurts. Can you go and beat the quarterback that right now is the incumbent, the guy who everybody says is the best quarterback in the division? We'll right. still figure out how that plays out with the whole Cooper Rush situation. But this is one of those games where they talk about it being a revenge game where Dallas had their number last year. Dallas has had their number a lot if you look at this series. I mean, we go back to the early 2010s where you get swept. You lose three games to them in back-to-back -back weeks at the end of the season and then go into the wild card as well. Good thing right now that it's only week six, like we said. I can't remember a game against Dallas being this early outside of the week two one when Sam Bradford played oh, and even. Jason Peters is <laughs> out and Lane Johnson moves to left tackle. That was just – No, you're right. Most NFC East matchups have been kind of stacked to the bottom mm -hmm. of the schedule over the years. But, you know, this is an early one, and I'm glad you mentioned Jalen Hurts, Gino, you know, because this is his – you know, he's checked off a lot of boxes this year and he's passed a lot of tests, but I think this is the first time in three years with the Eagles that he's been in this kind of, you know, he's already, he already knows what it's like Dallas week as the Eagles starting quarterback, but this is the first time in his career where he's going up against the Cowboys when both teams really need the win and both teams are very good. That adds another element. Any big game is going to feel more pressure, but against Dallas, especially on primetime football, this is a big test. I, I can't wait to see how he does against a loaded defense. And this is one of those games, too, where you're saying it could be pivotal either way. Because if you do well, then you're saying, oh, Jalen Hurts checked off another box. But if he struggles yeah. against Dallas, and my big thing, and I always say it on this show, is drafting to beat your division – I don't think it'll just be on Jalen Hurts' shoulder. I think it would no. be a, a bigger organizational question to say, have they done the right things in the offseason? Beating the rest of the teams in your division or outside of the division is great. Beating Arizona is awesome. Beating Minnesota is awesome. But what division games present is the potential to have a four game swing over any opponent yeah. if you are to sweep them. And that's why the pressure on this game is so much larger than any other game because even in last year down the stretch, you weren't in these games against top quality quarterbacks, let's say qu top quality teams. The NFC East wasn't as good as it is this year. Currently, it's the best division in football. And I always say that I enjoy Eagles football when the rest of the NFC East is good because not only does it put expectations on the team around them, but your expectations to beat the team inside your division only grow that much bigger being yeah. in Buffalo Lou you know even without Tom Brady there that Patriots Buffalo rivalry that means everything to them. that's the thing people can lie and say I don't I don't want to say lie but rivalries in sports have definitely gone down over the years with the implementation of fantasy sports and betting and people love individual players you mm -hmm. know the infatuation with the draft now we like a lot of players that even play in in the NFC East you know I, I love guys like Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel in Washington it's it's tougher to you know feel that animosity but one of the rivalries that truly does still feel like an old classic one is Eagles Dallas and when you put the matchup with these kind of stakes where both teams are this good on primetime football it just feels like, you know, as you mentioned, the Eagles are 5-0 and right now, and they've done pretty much everything we've hoped for. But this feels like the game where if Jalen Hurts goes in there and dominates the Cowboys in front of the entire country, this is where it's like, okay, not that I don't already think they're for real, but this is would be the ultimate just show of the NFL. The Philadelphia Eagles are a title contender. Yeah, they're definitely the bell of the ball. And yeah whatever you want to say about how the big stream media talks about the Dallas Cowboys being perennial Super Bowl contenders while they're actually putting out a team that looks like they can make a run if yeah. things are continuing to go that way. And you're 100% right, Lou. You look at some of these big matchups in the history over, let's just say, the last 10 years or so. Before that, you have to go to, I mean, 44-6. We all know about that. But I would say that 2019 matchup is very similar to this one, right? The teams weren't as good. We know that. Yeah. Neither team was looking to make a, a deep run in those playoffs, but it was almost, it was a win and you're in type of situation. Mm -hmm. And you looked at that team and said, 
can Carson Wentz get it done against Dak Prescott and that team that they put out it there? It means more to this fan and, and it does. And I said this to my fiance or my my fiance's family because yeah. they still deep down want me to root for Buffalo, and I never will. But I always say I only root for one team, and I'll always root against one team. I root I for the Philadelphia Eagles and whoever is playing the Dallas Cowboys because it does mean that much. At the end of the day, this is the one week where it is hard to put that fan bias aside. Because right. all of the talk year over year over year, the Eagles, they're treated like this little brother to the Dallas Cowboys when in reality they've been dunking basketballs over say, them for the for past 20 years. years being yeah. the superior team, the last time the Cowboys won a championship, VHS was still the main source of mm-hmm. viewing pleasure. So, yeah, I agree. It's one of those games where when you're watching it, it's harder to be objective. And mm-hmm. the emotions definitely, the, the, the ch- childhood, fanhood-like emotions come out of you. So it's going to be a great matchup on Sunday night. We'll continue to get into it. Coming up next right here on Locked on Eagles. And, guys, today's show is sponsored sponsored by better help life has thrown us all curveballs especially over the past few years i've always struggled with anxiety luckily i finally had the courage to talk to someone and thank god i did it's so important to show up for yourself and take care of yourself Letting others help is just as important. That is where BetterHelp comes into play. BetterHelp is online therapy. They will assess your needs and can match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. I've been seeing a therapist now for a couple of years. It's really changed the way I think, the way I go about crisis and stressful situations. I feel like it's made me more patient with myself and with others. I'll never recommend something more than BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. If you don't want to be on camera, you don't have to. Getting a therapist every week is as easy as a few clicks on your laptop or your phone. With therapy, it can take a few tries to find the right fit for you. BetterHelp makes it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. BetterHelp is a great way to invest in yourself. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp. They're recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states, and they have a special offer for our listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash lockdown. That's 10% off your first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash lockdown. This is the Lockdown Eagles podcast. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Make sure you also check out the NFL key predictions every Friday on Lockdown NFL. Lockdown's local experts give you the inside scoop on the five biggest games of the NFL weekend, including Sunday and Monday night football, plus betting advice from the field's leading experts at Bet Online. Follow NFL key predictions every Friday on Lockdown NFL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get the podcast on today's LOE, we're taking a first look at this huge matchup between the Eagles and the Cowboys on Sunday night football. The Eagles are five and zero. the Cowboys are four and one Gino taking a look at the injury report. Uh, pretty good heading into this matchup. So four fifths of the line are showing up on the injury report, but luckily they were all limited participants this week. Isaac Sayamalu with the ankle injury, Jordan Maialata with the shoulder Landon Dickerson with the ankle and Jason Kelsey also with the ankle. So they're all dealing with lower body injuries. Maialata's got the shoulder, but I think they're going to be at full strength. Dickerson and Kelsey both came back into that game against Arizona. Maialata was close to playing last week. And then of course, Lane Johnson's healthy. So I'm feeling pretty good about the protection and it's going to be huge because going up against Micah Parsons and maybe Lane Johnson's kryptonite, Demarcus Lawrence, it's going to be crucial to be at full strength. Well, he was his kryptonite for a good majority yeah. of the beginning of his career, but I think Lane is maybe not of, anymore. He's right? settled in and he's taken the last few rounds against them. But that's yeah. that's the one area of concern you have to look at if you are going to the X's and O's. Who are you trying to not ruin your game plan? And that's one yeah. of the things that I, I think I've learned over the last couple of years, which is a good way to look at football when you're watching Sundays. Who is that one guy that you say this guy cannot ruin our game? Right. Like if you're defending against the Philadelphia Eagles, Jalen Hurts cannot be the reason that you lose that football game. Have teams done a great job going against that? Not this year they haven't, but they're doing some things. They're trying to make him pass to his left more. They're trying to roll him outside of the pocket and not let him get settled. Well, if you want a recipe to take that away from the Philadelphia Eagles, it's having Tank Lawrence. It's having Micah Parsons, two guys that are going to flush the pocket, especially against a team that these guys aren't fully healthy. We have to call a spade a spade, even though they're going to play. Yeah, we have to know. Dickerson that they might be dealing be with this 
ankle injury for the entire season. I mean, we know he's been banged up now for all five weeks. He's still playing at an elite level, has not allowed a sack all year. Gino, four fifths of the offensive line is not allowed a sack. Dickerson, Kelsey, Samalu, and Johnson have not allowed one. So this is going to be strength against strength, and it's going to be really crucial. And I think, too, this is such a key matchup because Dallas is going to throw you a lot of different looks with where they bring pressure. Micah Parsons likes to line up, you know, kind of like how Hassan Riddick did at times as a stand-up linebacker rushing through the A-gap inside, and then he's on the edge. Sometimes he's lined up inside. He really is that rover. They move everywhere. And you saw the Arizona Cardinals last week. You saw the Detroit Lions week one. They had some success with blitzes and with disguising pressure. This team's got to do better at picking up where the extra pressure is coming from. Jalen's got to do better at finding the open man because there's somebody out there. And I think they got to do better at having those hot, hot routes available. I think they struggled. I'm glad Hertz figured it out at the end when it mattered most. Got to carry that into this game because the Cowboys are going to come at you. I think you have to go into this game with uh, quite the similar approach on offense as you did last week, but under a a different, I would say, philosophy. Get the ball out quick, but don't do it on those single screens where it's just a wide receiver and a cornerback. You're going to have to get motion involved. You're going uh, like the two point conversion play or the late potential touchdown that they had rather to Quez Watkins, where you motion AJ Brown across the formation in a jet look get him out to the flat quick, especially if they're playing zone coverage, you get him into a more favorable area. I say, though, Lou, if they are able to make Trevon Diggs have a tough day. That's where the thing, he... man. They leave him on an island a lot. If they can pick up this pressure, mm-hmm. there's going to be chances to go down the field. The thing with Trevon Diggs is that as good as he is getting to the football, it's a high-risk high reward type of mentality. Exactly. Because when you're going to the football, you're leaving yourself susceptible to being beat on big plays. And we have seen that it's happened in Trevon Diggs entire career. And that's the one thing that people won't talk about as much because that ball production is so good. He allowed a boatload of yards, a boatload of receptions last year, a boatload of touchdowns. You have to go through those wide receivers again and do it in a matter where I believe that they have the guys on the outside to win those one-on-one matchups outside of Trevon Diggs as well. Because what right. is Anthony Brown, their, their next corner up yeah. at that position? Yeah, he's the second corner that's going to – and I don't think they're going to have Diggs really roam. Um, I, I think – I was talking to Marcus Mosher of Lockdown Cowboys, and he, he was talking to me on Twitter about how they kind of keep Diggs a lot of the time. He doesn't shadow most mm-hmm. of the time. So I think that that's going to be key is whoever – Brown has to cover is going to be crucial. But like you said, I mean, Diggs, there can be times he's going to pick you off, but they're going to be some one-on-one matchups and you just got to bank on AJ Brown and Devonte Smith winning those matchups. You know what I mean? And so far this year they have, you look at that Washington game, Washington, a very similar strategy. I feel like, and when the offensive line settled in and gave hurts time, those two receivers were winning those jump balls. And there's going to be, I feel like a lot of similar opportunities in this one. And it all starts with the offensive line, as you said. And it not only starts with the offensive line, it starts with Jalen Hurts being comfortable. Because we know that they're going to present pressure. But he can't go back to those old ways. It's that Mm -hmm. type of thing where you go back to that schoolyard mentality when things don't go your way. Got to hang in there. Even if they're pushing, if you can buy another half a second to a second, that could be the difference. And will it be as easy to get outside of the pocket with with Micah Parsons pursuing you? No, absolutely not. But do I... Expect Jalen Hurts to win one-on-one individual matchups, even against the most elite of athletes in the National mm-hmm. Football League? I absolutely do. But how do you win with Jalen Hurts and win because of him? Well, the other guys have to win their one-on-one matchups as well. And it comes down to your left tackle and your right tackle. And not only that, Micah Parsons is going to be mugged. He's going to be in the A-gap. He'll be in the B-gap. Yep. He'll line up from depth. He'll line up from wide nine positions. He will be all over the football. So the person who has the most pressure in this game, Lou, especially after last week where I don't think they did a good job on offense, motioning guys around, getting favorable matchups, it comes down to Shane Steichen and Nick Sariani knowing Great that point. they have to go into this matchup to beat Dan Quinn's defense. A defense and a defensive coordinator that has had multiple years of success in multiple different teams, and he's doing it with the exact type of defense that he wants. Defense that's quick. They get to the quarterback, and they turn the football over. That's how the Legion of Boom made their money. That's how this defense is making money currently in Dallas. If they have a prototypical Dan Quinn type of game, 
This could be a rough one. But you also have to expect that your offense, if you want to compete with the top of the top, Lou, as we've said, year over year, trying to get to this point, can you be that high, prolific passing offense that even no matter how good the defense is, you look at that the divisional matchup between the Chiefs and Buffalo last year. Buffalo arguably had the best defense that we've seen in quite some time with how yeah. good that they were playing. What did Kansas City do? They went out and scored 42 Even points. when Buffalo knew they were throwing the ball. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally agree. This is going to be strength against strength, and it's just overcoming a tough opponent. I think, Geno, too, they have to put together four complete quarters. Not that Cooper Rush is better than Kyler Murray mm-hmm. or even Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff, anybody who played Trevor Lawrence, too, but this Cowboys team is so talented that I don't think you can afford to, even if you surge in the second quarter like you always do and maybe build a lead, you can't kind of take your foot off the gas like they've done a lot of times this year. I think they four complete quarters is going to be crucial. And as obvious as that sounds, you haven't really, and as good as they've looked this year at 5-0, and oh, you haven't had that yet. If you expect to go into this game and play 25 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe even 35 minutes of good football, you've already lost. Yeah. Divisional matchups, especially against Dallas, They come down to a full, complete 60-minute game, especially within the last five years. None of these games have really been blowouts. The only ones that have been kind of blowouts are like those end-of-the-year games where they don't matter for either one of the team. But the ones that have this huge impact on the landscape of the division, they're close. If you expect to just get by with what you did against Detroit, with what you did against Washington, and what you did last week against Arizona, you're going to have a bad time. This is not the team, it's not the time, it's not the situation, and it's not a type of matchup where you can expect to play, I mean, half of a game, two and a half quarters of a game that they fully completely played. But if they do, and on the optimistic side of that, play 60 minutes of football – we shouldn't be surprised if they are to come out of this game at 6-0, and winning a close game. Maybe they need a score late to do it, and Jalen Hurts put you in a position to go and win that Right, because it's not like the Cowboys have an easier test going up against the Eagles' defense as long as the Eagles' defense doesn't you know, beat themselves. And I mm-hmm. just – you got to be able to trust Jalen Hurts to make more plays in this game than Cooper Rush. That's what it comes down to. Definitely. Both rosters are loaded around these quarterbacks. Jalen is clearly the superior player – and I hope that should be the difference on Sunday night uh, between the 5-0 and Eagles and the 4-1 and Cowboys. We'll keep taking a look at this matchup coming up next right here on Lockdown Eagles. And this is the biggest week in Philadelphia Eagles football. We know that. We know that all of our fans listening to this show spend countless hours researching the division, especially what's going on in Dallas. So if you want to get like Lou and I and put in some player prop wagers, there's only one place to do it. We do it with LOE3 through the number one sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network and the Locked On Eagles Podcast, betonline.net. Lou and I, we've been doing this daily fantasy, your regular betting, whatever you want to call it, with football for years now. And there's only one place that we've been with for multiple years, multiple seasons, and it's betonline.net. The reason is, and we're not just saying this because we have a logo at the bottom of the screen, it truly is the best sports book. If you want to find out what is going on with your opponent, find out up-to-date injury news, find out the latest odds and props on any single game, you can go in to betonline.net, make an account, put any amount of money you want in there responsibly and make a wager or two. And this Sunday, if you want to be even more invested in this matchup, more than you already are emotionally, put some money down at betonline.net. But not only can you do that, the NHL has started back up. NBA is coming the back Sixers, very soon. The Phillies. Phillies get a win. The Yankees get a win. I'm a Yankee fan, but I'll always support the Phils as well. But if you want to bet on anything going on in this exciting world of sports currently, go to betonline.net. It's where the game starts. And thank you for being the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm Louis DiBiase. He's Gino Camilleri. This is Locked On Eagles. Thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. We are taking a first look at the Eagles-Cowboys Sunday night matchup this Sunday night at 825. The Eagles are 5-0. The Cowboys are 4-1. A huge must-win game already. 
despite being undefeated. And, you know, it's not just that, of course, the rivalry aspect of this game is extremely important for fans. They want to win, especially when they're this good. They mm-hmm. want to be seen as the top team in a really good NFC East. And I think the players are feeling this rivalry too. You know that a guy like Fletcher Cox is going to get up for this game. You know Brandon Graham, he talked about it in his press conference today, how much this means to the fan base, the city, the players themselves. But I also feel like even the new guys are not going to have a hard time really understanding and embracing this rivalry, right? I feel like these are the right kind of new additions that just get it and have adopted, you know, being a Philadelphia Eagle. I I should say just have adapted to being an Eagle and have that kind of pride where that hasn't always been the case when you've seen a lot of turnover, the 2011 Dream Team Eagles, the 2015 Eagles. It felt like just almost like mercenaries coming in. Mm -hmm. They didn't really care about, you know, the logo on their sleeve where this feels more like 2017 where all these new guys instantly gelled. It's easy too when you're a guy like Hassan Riddick and you grew up in the city because you're white too. They know what it takes against the Cowboys. They know how much the city cares. And I think it's just a testament to this organization picking the right guys, but also the culture already being here established that it's just seamless to bring in, you know, new players and have them fit right in. You didn't even mention the one guy that every Eagles fan should be happy is wearing the wings on his helmet and not a star this coming Sunday. And that's Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Oh, if yeah. you don't talk think about he, a perfect guy for this rivalry that's gonna talk trash. <laughs> if you <laughs> yeah. don't think this guy is roaring and ready to go for point, Sunday yeah. to get in the head of these cowboys and his counterpart, who might be the best ever at trash talk in Philadelphia, and Brandon Graham. Lou, you talk about how much this game means to him this year. This could potentially be the last time he ever plays the Dallas Cowboys. Who yeah. knows it? I know he's getting older. He suffered that injury last year. Hats off. Everything's been going well this year. But he's kind of under that tone now that he knows that this could be his potential last rodeo. If you don't think to him that that means everything, and Fletcher Cox for – Once again, if you look back at the highlights of what this NFC East was the past 10 years or so, you can look at Fletcher Cox and you can look at Zach Martin and those battles that they've had. That's some perennial teach tape for both sides of the football to all pro caliber talents. You know that they love getting in this heavyweight fight week in and week out. You have the CD Lamb element as well, who if Chauncey and him have to go against each other. I can't even imagine the trash talk that will be going on. The guy that has the mic'd up after this game, he's going to have to edit out nearly everything that is said between these two teams. Yeah, and it's just easier when you have loads of talent on both sides of the ball because you're going to have A.J. Brown is that kind of personality Mm -hmm. too, going up against Trayvon Diggs, who we know is a trash talker, and they're going to be a lot of man-on-man, one-on-one matchups between those two. And uh, again, there's guys that you know were born around this city and grew up as Eagles fans like Riddick and White and there's guys that have played through it for a decade plus in Graham and Cox and there's guys that are just natural trash talkers like CGJ and I just think it's a, it's a great combination to really ignite this rivalry this year again there have been some close games over the years but this feels more intense than those oh it definitely does and yeah Fingers crossed so far, we don't have a Doug Peterson moment where he said he's going to guarantee that they go out and beat the Dallas yeah. Cowboys. That's not the I don't right think you have to worry to about that. This team is too smart for that. They'll go and talk on Sunday, but they won't yeah. say anything Monday through Saturday. They haven't right. done it under Nick Sirianni's tenure. They don't get outside of who they are and who their leader is. It's Jalen Hurts. You don't think Jalen has something that he wants to say, but he won't. You know how he's going to talk? He's going to do it through the game, and he's going to celebrate afterwards, which you have seen in every one of these five wins. How even keel he is, he gets in the locker room, delivers his speech, and then he lets the fun be made. And that's how you have to do it, especially in this game, Lou. You don't have any excuse that you can tell Eagles fans that will make it okay on Monday if this team is to lose. The only way to win regardless of what happens Monday through Saturday, is to get that victory on the scoreboard. And I think everybody in that building knows it. You made a great point with, I mean, Kaiser White and Hassan Riddick just being Philly guys. They know yeah. what this means. And you don't think Jordan Davis, who's been in these high type of rivalry matchups between Alabama right, and the guy Georgia. Was in the SEC, he knows. Yeah. yeah. All of these players have been in these high profile moments. If there's ever a team that has an identity where they are, up to the task, 
to let all of the noise subside and go out there and play with their pads on Sunday, Lou, this is that team, man. I, I haven't yeah. felt this confident since that 2017 year where I didn't think anybody was going to beat them. Until somebody beats them now, I, I can't really bet against them at this point in time, and especially if they know and understand the magnitude of this event. Right. I'm getting the chills just talking about it, and we're still wait, four days away. This is going to be one night. for the ages, Eagles and Cowboys. The NFC East is better when all the teams are better. NFC Beast is back. Eagles are leading that 5-0, and they're going to be 6-0 and after Sunday. What are we talking about? Here? Sunday night kickoff, 825. We've got crossover Thursday tomorrow with myself and Marcus Mosher of Locked On Cowboys. Gino and I will be back on Friday as well. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on all platforms and on YouTube as well. Hit us up on Twitter at Locked On Birds, at DBASI, LOE, and at GC24 underscore football. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. Make sure your second listen, the Peacock and Williamson NFL show, Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson. They give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. As always, thank you for downloading. Thank you for watching and listening. And let's go birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.